Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Ari Views back with another video and today I will show you guys how to get the highest quality of videos and photos on your iPhone on iOS 17. Which settings you should change, which settings to enable or disable in order to get the best results out of the camera of your iPhone running iOS 17. Now just notice that not all devices will have the exact same settings. The pro devices will have some more settings. The other ones won't have those. So just take a look at the camera settings of your iPhone and see which of these settings that we're going to talk about you have and of course which you can use to improve the quality of photos and videos on your iPhone. So let's move on to the settings app. Here are the camera settings and let's start from the top here going to record a video. Here we will have all the video settings settings that we actually need. Now, first of all, we will have here the different resolutions and of course the frames per second. Now, I would suggest that you use 4K at 30 frames per second. That will take quite a lot of space on your device. So if you have a lower storage device, of course, that will fill up the storage pretty quick. But this is like the best resolution that you can get for videos on your iPhone. You will also have here 4K at 60 frames per second. But in my opinion, the 60 frames per second videos don't actually look that natural. So the best result basically you will get is right here, 4K at 30 frames per second. And then right here, we will have some really like cool options that we have on some of the iPhones like enhanced stabilization that actually works really really well so I suggest everyone has this enabled right here it will stabilize your videos and it looks way way better then you will have lower here action mode lower light what this means is that if you enable this and you're using the action mode on your iPhone of course for iPhones that do have this feature it will decrease the stabilization of the video to actually make the environment, the video brighter. I wouldn't suggest you use that because actually the stabilization is way more important and it looks way, way better with the enhanced stabilization working at its best. Then you will have HDR video. I don't actually use this for my camera. I think it makes the photos and videos not look that natural. And then we're moving to the auto frames per second here. Now what we have here is an option that will basically switch the frames per second on your video automatically. Now it does this to actually make the video brighter again on low light environments, but I wouldn't suggest you do this just keep it off basically switching from 30 frames per second to 60 frames per second it actually changes the video a lot and the video won't actually look that good at, at all because you know if you've seen a 60 frames per second video and a 30 frames per second video they actually look way different so it will actually mess up your video so i wouldn't use this option right here then you will have lock camera here what this does it basically won't allow the cameras to switch so it will be locked only on one lens so make sure you keep that off as well and then you will have lock white balance now this is a good option to have enabled what this would do is that if you're shooting let's say somewhere on maybe a room and you're moving outside the basically the white balance will be locked and your iphone doesn't have to just like try to figure out in which like white balance to put the camera on and you might have a video where somewhere it's like like actually really warm some somewhere it's really cold and you will have all the colors messed up so you want to use a one white balance when starting the video until the end of the video of course the camera will automatically adjust the other things like the exposure and all that to actually fit the environment but you have the lock white balance turned on and it makes the video look much much better moving on to the slow-mo settings right here now with the slow-mo settings this is simple here we only have two options the only change here is the frames per second if you're using 120 you cannot get the video that slow 240 of course makes the video way slower but of course it will take more space on your device but for the best result use right here 1080p at 240 frames per second moving on then here to record cinematic again not all iphones will have this now when it comes to shooting cinematic videos you want to shoot a video that actually looks like a movie this is the best option right here 4k at 24 frames per second this actually makes the video look like a real like a film like a movie and it actually even says right here with 4k at 40 frames per second 
film style. So this actually takes advantage of the cinematic recording and makes the video look like a real movie. And now let's move on to formats. Here we have the formats and the things we use for the camera when taking pictures. Like under formats here we'll have high efficiency and of course you will have most compatible. Now with most compatible of course this will take more space on your device. With high efficiency you can shoot more photos but of course the quality won't be that good. Now if we're looking just to get the best result you can go with most compatible. Then you will have here photo capture. Now this is for the newer iPhones. Now you can set the photos to 24, 24 megapixels. It used to be only 12. Now we have here 24 as well. So the change here is basically three megabytes for a photo of 12, 4.8 for a photo of 24. But of course you're getting a way better picture with 24. So if you have a newer iPhone and you have this option, always use the 24 option then you will have here pro raw and resolution controls now what this will do is not enable it it will only add the button on your camera where you can actually control it turn it on or off now when going here you will actually have a few options so you will have here a few different options to shoot photos and you will see what we have here if you're shooting for the best result of course pro raw max up to 48 megapixels will be your choice but the photos will be up to 75 megabytes that's actually a lot and if you shoot a lot of pictures and you tend to only keep them on your iphone then it will take a ton of space really quick so i wouldn't suggest that and you will have pro raw at 12 megapixels as well but what i suggest you do to get the best result out of your camera get great pictures and also not take a ton of space on your device use the first option right here jpeg max up to 48 megapixels and it will take only 10 megabytes for a picture on your iphone and then we have here the video capture as well again apple prores enabling that only will enable the option on the camera app where you can turn on or off the ProRes. Of course, it won't enable it for a camera until you enable it here. And then going here into the encoding, you will have a lot of different encodings here. Most people actually won't understand these a lot, but log, the one right here, is basically the format that retains more information. So if you just use these videos to edit them and you will use them to shoot videos, like maybe you want to upload them, edit some videos, upload them to the internet or something like that, this would be the best option option and then we have here preserve settings now this is pretty simple you want to preserve the settings that you set on your camera and not let them actually revert to their default you can use them here like the camera mode what this does you use the video mode right now when you go back to the camera app it's still on the video mode you use the portrait mode every time you will open the camera app it will be on the portrait mode and you will have basically the same for everything here exposure night mode whenever you use something on your camera it will stay that way and won't get back to the default all of these options will do just that and then we have some other options here like of course record stereo audio you want to do that you enable it here use volume up for burst if you want to take burst pictures most times burst pictures won't be the best pictures of course you can enable it here so you use the button to take the picture and then of course you need to enable scan qr codes and show detected text that way you can quickly scan a qr code through the camera of your iphone now what i would suggest you do to actually make sure that you take the best shots on your iphone is enable the grid right here which is of course this one right here the grid you see the lines and then the new option on ios 17 the level now this will show you a line here which basically helps you adjust your camera and level it so you can take the picture at like a level point and it looks much much better lower here we also have photographic style if your iphone has this you can use these these are like preset from apple here some of them look good and if you want to use one of them you can actually use them but it's not necessary and then you will have here main camera now this is for the newer iphones the iphone 15 pros if you have one of those you will actually have a few different lenses here so it has a 24 millimeter lens but you can also enable the 28 and the 35 now the way this works is that on the photo here you just tap on the one x and it switches 
from the 24 28 and then the, the, to the 35 millimeter lens so if you want to do those you can have them basically they are just adjusting the zoom on the camera of your iphone but i suggest you use the one x here the 24 as the default lens for your device and then we have another setting here for again the newer devices portraits on photo mode basically when you're shooting maybe your dog or a so some person even if it's not on the portrait mode it will still allow you to add the portrait mode afterwards on the camera app and then we have prioritized faster shooting doing this will just take a picture that is probably way on lower on quality but it will just prioritize you shooting the fit picture faster so make sure you disable that of course you enable lens correction right here and macro control so you will have the controls on the camera app when trying to shoot a macro picture so that's basically it for this video guys these are the settings that i use and i suggest every iphone user uses to actually get the best quality pictures and videos on their iPhone on iOS 17. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did. Of course, don't forget to subscribe for more and I will see you on the next one.